الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتم الخير وبيك نستعين يا فتاح رب شح صدري وسلي أمره وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي <تصفيق> الله سبحانه وتعالى states in the Quran ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب that whoever honors the شعائر of Allah one way we can translate it a sha'ir as um, you know, a symbol or a rite, R-I-T-E, of Allah. That whoever honors the symbols of Allah, it is certainly out of the piety of the heart. So there are many sha'ir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we see uh, on a daily basis. And the point of emphasis that Imam Nawi wants to do with bringing this ayah in his book is to focus on those individuals who are our scholars within the deen and memorize the Qur'an more specifically. So he brings a narration by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an that the Prophet sallam said that exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, includes giving honor to the gray-haired Muslim to whomever bears the Qur'an without exceeding its proper bounds or shunning it and any person of authority who acts justly. So he states that exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Most High is giving honor to the, the elderly Muslim, that individual who carries the Qur'an within their hearts. And not only do they carry the Qur'an within their hearts, but there's no ghulu. There's no ghulu. They are not exceeding the the, the boundaries that have been set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that have been set by the Prophet sallallahu i.e. one way we can think about it is, you know, they don't, um, they are, they, they do not, they are not individuals who may have memorized it, but do not practice upon it whatsoever. So they may preach it and they may read it, but there's no amal. So that would be an example of, of ghulu. Or another example of ghulu, of, of exceeding the bounds, would be an individual who memorizes a Qur'an or reads a Qur'an or has a few surahs memorized, but does not recite them with proper tajweed. No makharij there. There's no tajweed there. It's just recitation after recitation. Let me just see how many pages or how many juz I, I can finish. That's not the, the purpose of it. But we don't want to go in the opposite extreme either, where they're so focused on their tajweed, so focused on every pronunciation of every single letter, that there's no tadabbur at all. There is no pondering over the meaning at all. So you got two sides of the extreme. One where they don't care anything about the tajweed or the makharij of, of the huruf. And the other one, you care so much about it, where it, it doesn't even feel like Qur'an anymore and, and you're not even paying attention to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually is saying with the, with the hikmah of, of the verse. So the, the hadith is, is talking about that exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes honoring these individuals. That type of scholar, that type of hafil who carries the Qur'an within his heart and he recites it within his proper bounds and does not do the other extreme of, of shunning it. Okay. Uh, which is the, the word that, that the Prophet ﷺ is used is jafa. Jafa. So jafa we could refer to as an individual who doesn't even recite it at all. Doesn't even recite it whatsoever. Or even worse, he recites it, memorizes it, and then commits a major sin of forgetting it. That's a major sin within our deen. To read the Qur'an, memorize the Qur'an, and then forget the Qur'an. Though that is from the kabair. That is from the major sins. Okay. So, that's in regards to honoring those individuals who have Qur'an in their hearts and in their minds. And if we add another hadith to that, Imam Nawi says uh, on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha, um, he stated that, the Prophet ﷺ said that you treat, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to treat people according to their maqam, according to their rank. 
So if they are individuals who preach the Qur'an, they are individuals who spend day and night with the Qur'an and, and reading the Qur'an and propagating the Qur'an and ex explaining the meaning of the Qur'an, then most definitely, at least uh, what it seems to the eye that they are from the odia of Allah. Now we don't know the, 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 in the, the internal aspect, the internal nature between them and Allah, but based upon what we can see, they are always engaged in the ibad of Allah. Their personal akhlaq that you have with them one on one, it seems, it seems quite well. So the Prophet said, you treat individuals according to their rank. And we know when we look at the, the plethora of, of hadith, the, the rank that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rank that the Prophet gave to those individuals who carry the Quran within their hearts. To the point that when there were, there were two casualties from, from the battle of Uhud that took place, the Prophet Sallallahu he asked a question that from amongst these two individuals that passed away, who amassed more Qur'an? Who amassed more Qur'an? Who memorized more Qur'an from these two folks? So one of the Sahaba did ishara that this individual did. This individual memorized more Qur'an. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, put him in the lahd first. Put him in the, in the, in the grave first. He has... A, a, a higher rank, he has a more of authority than the other individual, just based upon how much that individual memorizes the Quran. So the rank, as we we saw in, in the in the first chapter, yarfa'u uh, qawman wa yadau akharim. The Quran it gives individuals ranks, it gives it, it it elevates the ranks of folks, and it also debases people as well. All right, it gives individuals higher ranks, and it brings down individuals' ranks. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said in regards to the, the awliya of Allah, man, man, man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantu bil haram. That whoever shows enmity to a friend of mine, he's a hadith Qudsi, relating from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that whoever shows enmity to a, to a friend of mine, then faqad aadhantu bil harb, then I have declared war against that individual. I have declared war against that individual. And if you're on the other side, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know that's not going to end well. That is not ending well. And um, that's why Imam Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i, they stated that if the scholars, you know, if, if scholars of the deen, if they are not the awliya of Allah, then, then there's no awliya of Allah. If you have something against the scholars of Islam, then... You know, you can't make a case for anybody to being the wali of Allah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to befriend the, the true awliya of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to become from the awliya of Allah and allow us to be implementing the Quran on a daily basis. Wa akhru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.